Hello and welcome back to my series on building a square drop trailer. In the last video, we were able to install a custom battery bank and a water tank that's tucked up into the frame. And in this video, we plan on getting the trailer painted and the trailer lights installed and working. However, before we get started on that, somebody pointed out that I need some extra gussets in the trailer frame in these locations. So I cut some scrap pieces of two by two and then I welded them onto the trailer. And then I used the ingenious rotisserie system from the last video to flip the trailer over so I could weld the bottom side of these gussets. Now before the trailer gets painted, I wanna make sure that most of the welding is done and most of the holes are drilled through the frame that need to be drilled. And this means getting the electrical for the trailer lights roughed in before paint and then after paint, we'll do the final install of all the lights. What I'm doing here is unboxing and organizing all the trailer lights so I can visualize where they go on the trailer and what holes need to be drilled and what brackets need to be built. I decided to start with the box that all the wires will be run to. This is a seven way trailer plug with a junction box that will be mounted near the tongue of the trailer. And here's the location where it'll be mounted, but I suppose I should go back in time and show you how I made these brackets. I took a single scrap piece of two x two and then I split it right down the middle Welded on a couple bolts, smoothed it out, and then put them on the frame. I chose this location because the trailer plug will be able to reach the tow vehicle. It's tucked up into the frame to avoid any obstacles when off-roading. And to maintenance it in the future is all you have to do is lay on your back and undo the cover. And now to drill all the holes for the lights and wires, we first have to lay out the lights on where we want them. For the brake and turn lights, I want the long slender look that still fits within the frame. And then for the reverse lights, I just want these little plug LED lights. Once I was satisfied with the location of each light, I went ahead and used a center punch, and then I used a small drill bit to drill a pilot hole. And then I measured each little plug light so I knew what size drill bit to use. I believe it was a three quarter inch drill bit. And speaking of drill bits, this drill bit is on its last leg. It's just the Cheap Harbor Freight step bits. If anybody knows how to sharpen these, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just keep buying new ones. There we go. And then I repeated the same process around the trailer, drilling out the hole for every light, and then cleaning out the holes with a magnet to get the metal filings out of them. The small round LED plug lights that I use for the amber and the red marker lights, and then the white reverse lights, all those are just compression fit. I'll end up putting a little silicone around them when I'm done installing them for good. However, these thin taillights I purchased came with some cheap self-tapping screws. I didn't want to use those screws, so I ended up going with a machine screw for a little bit more secure fit. This involves drilling and tapping the holes to accept the machine screws. And that's what I'm doing here. And here is a good example of hindsight is 2020. A red marker light is going to be installed in the very tip of this outrigger. And the wires for this light are going to run through the outrigger and into the frame. However, I never drilled a hole into the frame before I welded on the outrigger. And as you can see, I had to use a long extension on the end of the drill bit in order to get down the outrigger and into the frame. And then I was able to run a wire all the way through to exactly where I needed it. And then the same process was repeated around the trailer where the other amber and red marker lights will go. I had to use the same long extension as I was drilling through the outriggers into the frame. After the trailer is painted, I plan on building my own wire harnesses. And what I'm doing here is I'm just running some scrap wire along the frame so I can get an idea of where I have to drill the holes to run this custom wire harness. Most of the wires will be run inside of the frame, but there are a couple spots where they have to jump outside of the frame to get into another frame rail. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm drilling the holes for those. And once I'm satisfied that most of the holes are drilled and most of the brackets are built on this frame, I can start disassembling it and getting it ready for paint. And right now I'm just removing the suspension. And now begins a long, tedious process of prepping for paint. And here I'm grinding off some of those higher welds on those gussets that I just welded on to begin this video. And now I'm starting the cleaning process. 
I'm just using mineral spirits and a whole bunch of towels. Going through the entire trailer, towel after towel after towel, making sure I'm cleaning up as much dirt and grease and grime that I possibly can. I was actually surprised on how much dirt came off of this new frame. I'm assuming it has something to do with the oil that's used as a preservative of new steel. Is it a linseed oil? I'm not sure what it is. If you know what it is, let me know what type of oil they use. As you found out in the first video, I'm not a painter. So I have no idea if a self etching primer is superior to a mechanical etch, but I decided to go with the mechanical etching of the trailer frame. I used a sander across the entire thing. There were a couple joints on the trailer frame that I couldn't weld tight enough to make sure that they were weather tight. So what I ended up doing is mixed up some fiberglass reinforced bondo, and then I put that into the joints. It's hard to explain, but you can see the joint here. And then on the driver's side, you can see the exact same joint where that outrigger comes out right about here. And after the bondo hardened, I sanded everything smooth, and then went right back to cleaning the trailer frame. This time I used a wax and grease remover across the entire frame and I ended up flipping the frame over and doing the bottom too. I wanted to make sure everything was perfectly clean and prepped and ready for the primer. There are a lot of different coating options to help protect the metal of the frame. Everything from powder coating to truck bed liner to automotive paint. I ended up using Rust-Oleum primer and enamel paint. And I chose this method for a couple different reasons. One, it's affordable. Number two, if there's ever any scratches or, or dings in the future, I can just go to pretty much any store, get the paint, and touch it up. And number three, I've never built a trailer before, so I'm not sure exactly uh, how much more welding or cutting and drilling I need to do this frame. So I'm sure I'm going to have to sand down some of this paint later and then repaint it in the future. The bad thing about the Rust-Oleum bare metal primer is that it comes in white. I guess that's also a good thing about it too, because it'll be easy to see any future scratches. This next little trick I learned is from my father-in-law who did drywall for most of his career. He would put masking tape around the rollers to remove all the lint. That way the lint doesn't get on the project you're working on. Although paint products come in many different colors, painting, in my opinion, has almost nothing to do with color. I think it has more to do with texture. I once did a DOT medical exam on a professional painter. During the exam, I discovered that he was colorblind and he assured me that he doesn't have to pick out any of the colors on the job sites. He just has to make sure that they're applied correctly. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to make sure that the texture across the entire trailer is nice and even. I ended up going with two, two and a half coats. Some spots have three coats of primer across the entire trailer frame, both the top side and bottom side. And after the primer is dry, I took a rattle can of the same color paint as a satin black it went through all the areas where the rollers would have difficulties getting into. And it gave it a Star Wars feel. And now the trailer is finally ready for paint. I'm still going to be using the satin black from rust -Oleum, but I'm going to be using the rollers instead of the rattle can spray paint. I actually like the texture the rollers give, plus the cleanup is much easier, and we don't have to worry about the nasty fumes in the air, and it's winter in Minnesota, so spraying outside is not an option. Welcome! Hi! Hello! And then a couple friends stopped over for some cold snacks, pizza, and painting. And with the three of us, we made quick work. We ended up putting two or three coats on the entire trailer. By the next weekend, the paint was cured and the trailer is looking great. And the first project I tackled after it was painted was reassembling the suspension. And if you're curious on how this Timbren axle suspension is installed, go ahead and watch the second video in this build series and I'll show you step by step on how I did it. And now we can finally get started on running all the wires. I started by using this scrap piece of wire to fish through from where the light will come out on the outside of the trailer to the inside little spot. After this wire was fished through, I ended up taping on two wires to this wire. One would be positive and one would be negative going to the LED light on the outside, and then I pulled those two wires all the way through. On the inside of the trailer, these two wires will eventually go into the seven-way plug box, 
What I wanted to do is make sure everything was as watertight as I possibly can, so I ended up putting a grommet around it. And then I repeated the same process on the passenger side amber marker light. What I ended up doing was starting on the front of the trailer and working my way towards the rear of just running the wires to their desired location without actually installing any of the lights yet. And as you can see, the positive wires for these amber side marker lights start at the junction box, go through the middle of the frame rail, come out through this location, through the outrigger, and then come right out to the side. And now the wiring for the trailer brakes is no more difficult than hooking up a light. Instead of turning on a light, what they're doing is just turning on a magnet inside of the brakes. And it's the single blue wire that starts at the junction box, comes down, and then it's split into a red and a yellow. I use the red for the driver's side and the yellow for the passenger side. And these are the positive wires that go to the magnet inside the brake. The negative is just grounded right to the trailer frame. And I'll show you how I did that in just a little bit here. But for now, I'm hooking up these waterproof wire connectors just to make it look a little more professional. And if I ever have to service these brakes in the future or replace them, it'll be an easy clip in and clip out. The kit I bought on the internet came with the wire crimpers needed to hook up the little terminals that are inside these wire harness clips. Nice. And then I repeated the exact same process on the driver's side brake. After I installed the waterproof wire connectors, I ended up using a plastic wire loom to help protect the wires on both the driver's and passenger side. To secure the wire loom to the control arm, I ended up using <laughs> some plastic cord clips that have self-adhesive strips on the back that just simply peel off and stick right to the control arm. The grounding for the trailer brakes and the grounding for the side marker lights are pretty easy. I just crimped on some ring terminals and then I put them right on the same bolt hole that the water tank mounts to. I just got off the phone with my brother-in-law and he said that he'd come over and help pull the main wire harness from the rear of the trailer all the way up into the front where it enters the seven-way junction box. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm installing the seven-way junction box and getting it ready for the main wire harness. To create the main wire harness, I took all the wires needed, everything from the reverse lights, brake lights, tail lights, marker lights, I laid them out on the countertop and then I put tape every couple feet just to hold it together. Unfortunately, my brother-in-law doesn't like being on video, but fortunately, my camera decided to take a bunch of still photos instead. Thanks for the help! Now that the wires are pulled through, now we can get started on wiring in the seven-way junction box. And I used the cheat sheet that came with it. I just went through one wire at a time, installing a ring terminal, and then putting it through and attaching it to the correct spot. And then I cleaned up all the wires that go into the junction box. I used some wire loom and some tape, and the grommets helped seal everything up, make it look nice. And then I went to the back of the trailer and did the same thing. I cleaned up all the wires that come out of the main center spine of the frame, and go into the rear frame rail. Same thing, put some wire loom around it, clean it up, and then finish it off with some grommets. Now that all the wires are done, they're hanging out the proper spots where the lights go, now we can actually get started on installing the lights all the way around the trailer. And this was actually a pretty simple process that just took a little bit of time. It's a matter of stripping the wires and getting them ready for the butt connectors. I ended up using a, a heat and shrink with solder butt connector that a friend brought over. It ended up working pretty well. Just gotta make sure the heat is right. Not enough heat and the solder doesn't melt on the inside, and too much heat it actually melts right through the rubber or the plastic butt connectors. Over the top of the butt connectors, I ended up using just a normal heat shrink, just to help waterproof it a little bit before putting it back into the trailer frame. And the last thing I did before pressing them in was just applying a little bit of silicone all the way around the seal. If you look closely at these plug lights, you'll actually see that they're labeled top and bottom, just to make sure the light is pointed in the right direction. And then I went around the trailer counterclockwise, repeating the exact same process on each one of the marker lights. I'm not an expert on this, and I don't even know if I did it right, but there are diagrams online that show you where the amber and red lights should go on a trailer. Also, keep in mind that LEDs, or light emitting diodes, are diodes, meaning they only allow the electrical current to flow in one direction. A lot of RV manufacturers will have white as the negative, and a lot of automotive manufacturers will use black as a negative for the ground. Make sure you test them before you do each one so you know what is positive and what is negative. And then I waited till later that evening when it was dark out to test out the lights. Everything seems to be wired correctly and the LEDs are super bright. 
And that's a dude for this episode. We were successful at getting the trailer painted and wired. And stay tuned for the next episode, where we have to build things and build things in order to build things. <laughs>